If you are reasonably attuned to the world of evolutionary biology and spend a modicum of time on the internet, then you've probably come across memes about everything evolving into crabs. And ludicrous as this may sound, there is some factual basis to it. The process at the centre of this niche internet phenomenon has been dubbed carcinization, and refers to the fact that, among crustaceans, a group of arthropods that includes not only crabs themselves, but crayfish, shrimp, and lobsters. A crab-like body plan has evolved several separate times in different groups. There's the true crabs, which form an order called the Brachiura, but there's also a number of other crustaceans outside the Brachiura that have independently evolved a crab-like morphology. Hermit crabs are one such example which in spite of the name are not actually crabs, but one of their numerous impersonators, so to speak. Carcinization is but one of countless instances of convergent evolution, which describes the process by which different organisms evolve similar features independently, often as a result of inhabiting the same sorts of environments, facing the same challenges, and thus being wrought by the same selective pressures. Many examples of convergent evolution, from subtle to striking, can be found all over the natural world. Among reptiles, an elongated, legless appearance is a recurring trend. And in plants, a number of different groups have evolved to become carnivores as an adaptation for surviving in nutrient-poor habitats. But for this video, we'll be honing our gaze upon the world of spiders. With such a wondrous assortment of species, from the bizarre to the extraordinary, it's essentially a given that, nested amid this dazzling variety, many examples of convergent evolution can be found. And in the years I've spent getting up close and personal with these arachnids, one recurrent pattern has stood out to me, not least because it echoes the ever-so-famous carcinization to quite an intriguing degree. This is Thomisus spectabilis one of a group colloquially known as the Crab Spiders, a name that, following any observational period of ample thoroughness to behold their distinctive appearance and often sideways movements, will need little explanation. Spiders as a whole are known, and to an extent feared, for their incredible mobility, their fast, erratic scampering, and ability to scale just about any surface with utmost ease. Crab spiders, however, didn't quite get the memo there. Slow moving and cumbersome, crab spiders walk in a manner that makes one suspect Australia's drinking culture may not be entirely exclusive to humans. Endearingly clumsy and bumbling as their demeanour may be, crab spiders are a predator that one underestimates at their peril. For while mobility is most certainly not their forte, they more than make up for this athletic paucity with their mastery of ambush. And it is here that their unusual, crab-like anatomy comes into play. All crab spiders have the same basic body plan. Their back four legs are rather small, while their front four are large, robust, and often lined with a series of miniature spines. The spider, when hunting, will rest motionless, its front legs agape, patiently awaiting the arrival of its next victim, upon which it will spring into action, seizing it with its spiked forelimbs before finishing it off with a bite. As hunting methods go, the crab spider's modus operandi is no doubt simple in the extreme, but when one looks at the prey items that these seemingly inoffensive little spiders are able to subdue, the results speak for themselves a clear testament to the shocking power and lethality that lurks behind a crab spider's bumbling visage. That crab spiders are remarkably effective predators is more than a matter of subjective opinion being espoused by one nerd in one YouTube video. It could be said that nature itself seems to be on the same page, for not only are crab spiders widespread, abundant, and diverse, all hallmarks of evolutionary success, the crab spider's body plan and mode of life has been replicated elsewhere in the spider family tree. Among the more curious sights one may encounter on a wander through the forests of eastern Australia, is this, a cluster of brown, spherical objects that may, at a cursory glance, 
appear to be a collection of seed pods or fruit, perhaps. And there are parallels to be drawn, for they are indeed the cradle of a new generation, except not of plants, but spiders. Seamlessly hidden among the vessels of her progeny is Selenia Excavata. In this resting pose, her form is indistinct, and her coloration, brown and grey blotches atop a dirty white base, causes her to bear a striking resemblance to a lump of bird droppings, a most remarkable feat of camouflage. It's only when Selenia decides to move that her spidery form becomes apparent, and when it does, it exhibits a familiar pattern. A compact build, with small hind legs and large, powerful front legs adorned with rows of grappling spines. This must surely be another crab spider, or at least a very close relative. Well, that is where you'd be mistaken. For uncanny as the resemblance may be, Selenia sits not among their kind. She is, in fact, a strange form of orb weaver one that has all but eschewed the delicate, web-based lifestyle of her near kindred in favour of a more direct, muscle-on-muscle -muscle mode of hunting. Selenia targets moths, an abundant source of food for a nocturnal spider, though in the absence of a web, hunting them would seem like a tall order. Selenia, however, has a tricksy little tactic that ensures the success of her hunts is not beholden to mere chance. Selenia deploys a pheromone, a chemical cue, that mimics the scent released by female moths looking for a mate, and male moths, no doubt drawn hence by the alluring promise of some late-night romance, will soon find themselves in the grip of an embrace more tight and unrelenting than even the most open-minded among them would have dared to bargain for. As Selenia, just like the crab spiders she so closely resembles, locks down her victim with her spiked forelimbs, and sinks her fangs into the betrayed bachelor's flesh. So stunning a replica of the crab spider body plan arising within an entirely separate group of spiders says a lot about the viability of this particular build, and Selenia is by no means the only example of this. These same local bushlands are home to other, much smaller spiders, some so diminutive and cryptic that years' worth of forays into these familiar, homely forests had until late yielded a grand total of zero encounters. And though I may like to think that there's a mindset and a method behind my searches, very often it comes down to nothing more than being in the right place at the right time. Foliage is an ideal shelter for an all manner of small creatures, and here, on this sapling, is one of the most bizarre little spiders I've ever had the pleasure of encountering. This tiny creature, small enough to perch comfortably upon my thumbnail, is Arcus Fercatus. At a distance she appears utterly indistinct, as easily dismissed and overlooked as the countless tiny critters one passes by in their daily musings with not a glance to spare. But upon lowering one's gaze down to the level of her miniature world, the spider's unusual form and beautifully intricate markings, streaks and blotches of fiery iridescence upon a somber beige backdrop, begin to materialize. Among her more notable traits are the dual prongs at the rear of her body. These are the feature from which she gets her name, for the species epithet Fercatus means forked. Arcus Fercatus is one of a large number of Arcus species, the vast majority of which are endemic to Australia. A great deal of variation exists across the genus. Some are rounded and bulbous, others mimic bird droppings, and perhaps most remarkably of all, several Arcus species have a distinctively triangular abdomen, and I'll admit it was the triangle-shaped species I was most keen to film, and to rub things in, I did find a triangle during this very trip, it was just on the wrong animal. Just like Selenia, Arcus, in her resting pose with her legs folded tight against her body, scarcely even registers as a spider. But that all changes once she stretches out and begins to explore. She too is of close affinity to the orb weavers, though unlike Selenia, she is not part of the group itself, but instead a member of the separate but closely related family Archaeidae. 
Archis Percatus, like all members of its genus, is an ambush predator. One that again mirrors the tactics employed by crab spiders, and possesses the same key adaptations. Small rear legs and large spiny front legs. The leg spines in particular have been taken to another level by Arcus. Relative to the spider's body, they are positively enormous, and when the spider grapples onto a prey item with its powerful front legs, the spines interlock to form a cage, holding the victim ever more firmly. Though Silk may take a backstage role when it comes to hunting, this Arcus wasted no time in demonstrating her mastery of it nonetheless. Lifting her abdomen into the air, she releases a long trailing filament to be borne aloft by the wind, and as soon as it catches upon another object, perhaps a nearby tree or a shrub, she darts across the gap. This, it could be said, is her own portable zipline, a handy way to escape an uncomfortable situation in a manner that few pursuers could hope to follow. Between Thomisus, Selenia, and Arcus, all spiders that one could potentially encounter on a mundane walk through Brisbane's idle suburbs, we have what I would venture to say is one of the spider world's most memorable instances of convergent evolution, the arachnid's very own version of carcinization. Just as crustaceans have repeatedly evolved to resemble crabs, spiders have repeatedly evolved in the likeness of crab spiders. Once you recognise it, convergent evolution is well and truly everywhere, and examples are just as prevalent in the fossil record as they are among entities living and breathing today. For a bizarre, prehistoric animal that convergently evolved features alike to arthropods, take a look at this video about the recently described Entothereos. And if you enjoy my content, then by all means, subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on my next adventure.